So this is about circadian clocks in physiology. Forgive the fuzzy quality of this video. Uh, the camera is zooming in and out of focus on my hand. Um, the system works with a series of transcription factors, and I'm going to do one version. This is only one way it could work, and it's a schematic of the more complicated version that really exists. So transcription factor A it stimulates, uh, enhances production of transcription factor B, which enhances production of transcription factor C, and each transcription factor inhibits the earlier transcription factor. In other words, transcription factor A will bind to the gene for transcription factor B and enhance production of messenger RNA, causing production of transcription factor B and inhibiting itself, inhibiting production of itself. The result will be that you'll get a rise in transcription factor A, followed by B, followed by C. Then you start again, starting by A and so on, starting back with A again and so on. So how do you set the timing of this? So how do you reset it so that it stays matched to the time of day and night? The system can work if, for example, we use light, which inhibits melatonin. Melatonin is produced at night. So at night, high melatonin. During the day, low melatonin. And if we did a uh, drawing here with a couple of days and nights, what we'd see is starting off with trace levels of melatonin to high levels of melatonin. We'd be low during the day, high at night, low during the day, high the next night. Okay, so melatonin is high during the night. So melatonin then can become a signal that we can use to regulate this system of transcription factors. So melatonin binds to its receptor, which would be a G protein coupled receptor, and that activates production of a second messenger, say cyclic AMP. And now imagine that cyclic AMP, or the second messenger, can bind to one of the transcription factors and inhibit some stage of this process. So binding to and inhibiting transcription factor A. So now we have transcription factor A bound to a second messenger cannot bind to its target sites. So here's melatonin, second messenger, transcription factor A bound to that second messenger. So let's imagine normally transcription factor A binds to the gene for transcription factor B. Here's RNA polymerase. And that causes transcription. So here's messenger RNA being produced for transcription factor B. And this is, of course, the transcription factor B gene. And that normally would result then in translation through a ribosome to make transcription factor B. But if transcription factor A is bound to the second messenger, it doesn't happen. It doesn't bind. You don't get messenger RNA, and you don't get transcription factor B. So the result would be over time, you'd have transcription factor A, but light or melatonin is resetting this. So in the presence of melatonin, you neither inhibit transcription factor A, nor can you start production of transcription factor B. So there's a delay in the rise of transcription factor B. Transcription factor A sticks around longer because it's not inhibited. And melatonin then declines. As melatonin declines during the daytime, finally, at the end of this delay, transcription factor A can finally rise because transcription factor a, sorry, transcription factor B can rise and the whole cycle can keep going. The next day, again, you get a delay as long as it's dark. So there's a delay in tr transcription factor B until daylight. And again, transcription factor B starts. And the cycle goes on. So this gives us a delay every dawn. And the result is that every day we delay transcription factor B until dawn, until light. And that sets our clock. The clock is reset to dawn every day. So how does the clock control cells. So how does it control what happens at one time of day versus another? Well, the transcription factors A, B, and C are only present 
at specific times of day or night. So high B indicates a particular time, some period starting at around dawn until maybe noon, about a f uh, four, five, six hour period. B and C together would happen only in the afternoon because B has to be around for a while before it induces um, C. So when, T, when transcription factor B is high, it'll bind to enhancer sites for other genes, say gene X, you get messenger RNA for gene X, and that only is going to happen in that period of approximately dawn to noon. And so whatever that protein does is only going to happen in that period from about dawn to noon. And so depending on how many transcription factors are involved, and the timing, and of course there can be more, you get a transcription factor code if you want to think about it that way. So the way I've drawn it here, dawn would be as B is rising, dusk would be around the peak of C, and then the next dawn is around the time when A is declining and C is going up. So any gene that requires transcription factors A and C, that only is going to require in that period after dusk, uh, somewhere around dusk to midnight. Whereas transcription factor A for some other gene, sorry, gene T, F, A, and C here, here's RNA polymerase. TFA and TFC are both enhancers, and they're both required for gene Y. You're only going to get messenger RNA when both TFA and TFC are present, and that's only going to happen in that period around evening to midnight. What if you need an even more precise clock? Use more transcription factors, either the same core set of two or three transcription factors, or each of the A, B, and C could trigger other transcription factors.